very, very quickly. But I, it's great to have Spike back the, and have Adam. What I loved about this panel is putting an operator, Spike, Chef, building NFT community. And Adam, you're building platforms, digital platforms, uh, kind of on the tech technology side. Having these two conversations uh, and you guys talk in one conversation, that'd be great. Perrin, take it away. Oh, you're muted, Perrin, real quick. Uh-oh. Can't hear you. As he works through it, um, we'll have him. You might have to refresh, Perrin. Uh, Adam, very quickly, uh, tell people about Brightloom. You are with a company called Brightloom, which is a digital technology platform for restaurants, right? Yeah, that's right. We we help brands, mo mostly consumer brands, restaurants, chains, retail uh, chains, essentially have better relationship with their customers through data and technology and next generation loyalty, essentially. So we're trying to do our best to take um, everything from, uh, you know, actionable insights that you can get from your first party data and segmentation all the way to helping brands with their NFT strategy to build community and unique experiences. So we believe like the combination of like hyper personalization and data and, and the kind of things that Web3 enables around community and connection. And uh, we, we think that's the future. And, you know, we're excited to help brands in their journey. Mike, check on Parent. How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Welcome. Right. Okay. Excellent. All right. I'll step back. You take it away, Parent. Perfect. Well, I'm Parent, publisher of LA Eats, and it's nice to meet everybody. And we have uh, Adam here from Brightloom and Spike, who has many things, including the Chef de Pizzas. And I think uh, Mike already had you introduce yourself. I'm not sure. I think Spike would be next real quick and then love to kind of set up the conversation for today around Web3 and restaurants. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Chef Spike Mendelson here. Uh, well, just Spike Mendelson. You don't have to call me chef. Uh, I, uh, you know, most recently uh, launched and sold out uh, Chef D Pizzas, which is, uh, you know, an, an NFT uh, project basically um, uniting the food and beverage world uh, with Web3 and getting those two two worlds to kind of talk to each other. Uh, we do it through, uh, you know, the popularity of chefs because we're, we're at the forefront of food and and kind of the ultimate connector in the food system and, and everything really there. So um, that's been fun. And then, yeah, we, I, have, I have restaurants. I also have a day job, <laughs> which is uh, running a restaurant company. We have uh, two new startups, which is a plant burger, a CPG company called uh, Eat the Change, both uh, planet friendly, uh, uh, plant based companies. And uh, yeah, we've been growing those. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple other things, but but we're here to talk about Web3 NFTs, and I'm excited to talk to Adam. I mean, listen, uh, you know, we're, we have a, a new brand, if you will, uh, called, it's, it, it is Shefty, and, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot just by having him here and hopefully connect with him after, too, because uh, it's kind of a, an exciting movement right now, so. Yeah, let's open it up. I'm excited to kind of get into it. I think just to give a kind of sense for the audience, we're going to try to get into how Web3 can be able to be used to leverage to bring community and utility together to hopefully reduce customer acquisition costs in, in a sense that ultimately we're trying to use it as a, a different channel and want to frame it around that and bringing people in. Obviously, all of this is great, but people are running a business as you both are and how can we kind of connect it back? So the first thing is really kind of figuring out how like establishments and chefs can build more loyalty with their community using Web3 and NFTs. And I think you both have different approaches. I'd love for Adam to kind of jump in and give set the foundation and then uh, Spike, if you'll come in and kind of tell us what you're doing, which is really interesting with Shefty and, and, and basically creating a, a, a forum for a lot of other chefs to kind of get comfortable with Web3. You guys are really kind of the incubator in a way for them. Sure. I'm, you know, I, I'll go first and then I'll turn it over to Chef. I, I, I just want to call you Chef. I love that. So I've always wanted to do that because it makes me feel like I'm working in an actual Perfect. restaurant. Do that. Um, so the, what I'd say, let me, let me maybe talk generally and then uh, Chef can kind of take it in terms of specifics for restaurants and for chefs as individuals and as Perfect. brands. So the thing that I, why I'm so turned on by the Web3 space is the idea that there is this concept of owning a digital collectible that also doubles as an access pass. Like the combination of those two things is like mind blowing because you both have the fun and ownership uh, of owning something that if it has more value, maybe, maybe it can go up in value, whatever. But the point is that it's yours, it's a collectible, it can be fun. And the fact that it's, it, it can double as an access pass and it's, you know, meaning it's like programmable. It, it's, 
you can gate who gets to get special content, who gets to get special experiences, who gets to get surprise and delight benefits. Like we all know the concept of membership. We all know this on concepts of collectibles. When you put the two together, this amazing thing happens and community forms around it. And like it's everybody's dream in the business world, whether you're a individual or a brand to sort of have this concept of a brandable collectible that community would, would, would coalesce around that could create a new model of membership. And so it's super technical right now. And it's kind of a clunky experience to sort of deal with it if you're not used to it. But if you put all the technology aside and just think about those things, it's like mind blowing because now, for example, not just brands and restaurants, but authors and creators of all kinds, they can create a sense of direct connection and community with their thousand true fans, as they say. And like, and that ability to both um, connect directly with this community and the, the community kind of talk to one another and they all sort of like tribally band together and have a, have a similar interest. Like, that's just really cool. So whether you're in the restaurant business or the retail business, or you're an artist or whatever, like that's just good. And that's a good, interesting opportunity in general. And I'll turn it over to chef to kind of talk about it more specifically in the restaurant concept context. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Adam, first of all, fantastic job uh, describing that. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very refreshing to hear someone else like just really like pinpoint the opportunity so well uh, for the industry. And um, so, I mean, you nailed it. So, uh, but you know, so with, with what Adam just said, a lot of that does get very complicated when people start getting into web three for the very first time. Um, so for me, it was really important to kind of experience it myself. I've always, I mean, let's back up a little bit. I've always been a little bit of a disruptor in my space, right? I've always been, you know, not really supportive of the James Beard Foundation pay to play. I've, I've always kind of do my offset food festivals in and around larger food festivals. I've always been chefs deserve more IP, you know, and part of larger part of deals, right? As culinary artists. So, you know, we spent a lot of time making a lot of other people rich uh, in, in our past years. So just at the basis of that, my curiosity for Web3 and to dive into it, it was, 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 was that's kind of what the beginning of it was, right? So when, you know, I went in to kind of discover the space, I very, you know, very fast, you know, understood that this was all about community, building communities, right? Uh, and, you know, chefs are very well poised to build communities. That's kind of what we do naturally with our restaurants, right? We have to kind of build a community around like the offerings of our menus and, and gain trust and and so forth and give loyalty in some in some way. So I thought there was a very interesting proposition for chefs to kind of dive deep into Web3, right? Especially during the pandemic where I felt a little dumb and left behind in Web2 when we were fighting to find our customers at home, right? For instance, where customers weren't coming into our restaurants anymore. And, and the only way we can find them was through third-party delivery systems like Uber Eats or, or Caviar, which were taking huge margins. And, you know, thank God they existed because we were able to kind of figure that out. But man, did they take huge margin, right? So, you know, it just got my, you know, myself thinking. So, you know, I decided to launch this project, which was Shefty Pizzas. And what's really cool about it is it's basically like a membership to this community, to the this foodie community, if you will. Um, the PFP project with the pizzas, whether it's silly or not, it was really training wheels for, for Tom, Leo and I, and team to kind of learn the space, learn the ins and outs, have something to chat about, have some type of flat platform on Twitter space, right? And to build a community. But soon after we announced the project, it's when my mind just started going nuts, right? Because I would go into the Discord, which is where this is, you know, all the communication happens. And I would see that we harnessed like the foodies of all foodies, right? The ones that want the, the ones that spend money at our restaurants, our cookbooks, tune in to watch our shows, are part of loyalty programs. Like it was like the best of the best foodies. I, and it just so happened that it was fan, fans of Tom Calicchio's and fans of mine in the same community. I said, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of a moment. We're harnessing two different fan bases and foodies and bringing them into this one to share. Uh, and the conversation took much further than just pizzas, right? People started, you know, just posting their food or having, does pineapple belong on a pizza or not, for instance. And, and we were, you know, uh, doing these virtual pizza classes. Um, and we hadn't even launched our NFT yet, right? We were just 
had our discord and we were just learning and learning and we were like, oh, wow, like, you know, we literally just launched a pizza competition. People went out to grocery stores to buy foods. They went to go spend money. They brought those brands back in their house. They took photos of them. They created a recipe. And then Tom and I judged it. And I just thought that was like a mind boggling experience. I was like, oh, wow, brands would definitely have to be interested into our community, right? Why not market to the best of the best of the foodies of the world, right? So that was just an interesting proposition. And before you know it, like the Discord takes a life on its own. It's like, can we open a London channel, a New York channel, a Hong, cha a Hong Kong channel? And before you, you, you know it, you have these micro food communities also developing within Discord, right? Which presents itself a whole other slew of opportunities. So then Tom and I sat back and we, we said, listen, we started with this PFP project. But the larger than life idea was really kind of what Adam was kind of le leaning into, right? We really wanted to harness the best of the best food foodies and give some type of loyalty and special access to them like they've never seen before, right? And also be able to drive this awesome asset, right? That's that's the key thing, right, Adam? Like being able to have this two-prong approach with the NFT where the community feels not only are they having these experiences, right? But they're also building this asset, this ownership of this that that they're part of. So, anyways, I could go on forever, but I just want to pause and throw back to you guys. So, well, definitely, I want I want to toss it to Adam because I think you lend from community, and I want to kind of take us to utility. And yeah. I think something that I really want to discuss is tokenized loyalty and how it kind of the value of what the chain can bring some of the rights you're talking about in terms of monetizing and actually creating some sort of ecosystem around it and how it differs from a traditional web two off chain strategy. Cause I think this is a great use case for people to understand there's actually some real value that's right available now. And I know you guys are both interested in it. Yeah. So I think I love that term tokenized loyalty. We use that at Brightloom, but I, I want to go back to something chef just said, which is that, um, when you think about like, why couldn't you do all this just in a normal loyalty program? Or why couldn't you do all this with just like a chat room or why, like what, why web three, why NFTs? What, and, and, you know, put aside all the technology again, if you've never, if you don't understand NFTs, you don't understand crypto, you don't need to, if any of you have ever either invested in a company or had your own company or, had a stamp collection or, or a baseball card collection. They're all, what they all have in common is that you have some skin in the game and you feel like you're a co-owner. And there's just something, I, I don't know how to describe this. And it, I'm going to sound really woo-woo here, but like when you actually feel like you own something and you've got skin in the game, it doesn't matter whether you make money on it or whatever. I mean, that would be nice, right? But it's more about like the feeling of agency, collaboration, skin in the game, like co-ownership, co-authorship, like, there's something that mentally changes when people, I mean, imagine if you were like, when I was a little kid, I used to collect stamps and baseball cards. Like, could you imagine if like I was collecting them, but I didn't really own them. Like it, it would, it would just be different, right? You could say, what's the difference? Like you're completing a set. You're like, it's different if it's yours. And so I think everything that Spike was saying about the willingness, the desire, frankly, the fun of showing up in a discord which is like a basically if you don't know what discord is it's basically like a subreddit or like a chat room right that's and usually is only available certain parts of that chat room only available from members of the community as proven by the fact that you own a um uh, one of these nfts and so and the and and, and um, spike also mentioned the idea he had fun with the different uh, profile picture faces the different pizzas that like so every single one of these membership cards in this content and community offering and platform that he and his team are putting together, like there's also some fun, like, oh, I got a rare one or like, oh, I wish I had that one. That one is more reflects my personality. So there's an element of like ownership and fun and collaboration that's really only possible in a world where everybody feels like they own a little piece. And so I just wanted to kind of point out like that's tokenized, sorry, there's construction going on next to me. I don't know. Like, course is happening right now but like the um there's a there's a there's an element of like fun collaboration skin in the game agency like all of those things come to life in this space in a way i've never seen before and that's what tokenized loyalty is and you said what's the difference between that and like a traditional loyalty program so when my team and i built loyalty at starbucks right it was like the ultimate like gold standard of like an earn and burn um rewards program where you the more you transact the more points you get and you can redeem them but you know 
And I say this as somebody with love and respect to somebody. I think that's really important to have a loyalty program in that way. But I'm now thinking past that. That was, you know, that was really innovative and interesting. I think it's table stakes now. So don't get me wrong. I think it's really important. Customers want convenience and rewards, which are the hallmark functions of a modern, call it mobile loyalty ordering and internet ordering platform. However, at its heart, it's not where the puck is going. Where the puck is going is more about community and collaboration and shared interest and and bringing different, you know, Spike mentioned how he brought his community together with Tom's community. And like, that's so web three. That's what happens in the future of loyalty. That's what happens with tokenized loyalty where you feel some, I'll call it collegiality and belonging and ownership versus like points and coupons and for transactions. And don't get me wrong, you need those. Those are, they're called table stakes for a reason. Don't rip those out if you have those because they're critical to your business. They give you data. They digitize your relationship with your customers. So don't get me wrong. They're super important. In fact, they're so important. They're table stakes, but they're not, they, they lack a certain level of emotional connection to the brand and the customer that I think Web3 allows. So And just for everyone to understand the tokenized element that's slightly different, think of it like uh, an airline point system where your company could sell these points in theory outside of your traditional ecosystem. So it opens up potential opportunity to partner with other networks and sell them and then have them incentivize kind of coming back in or giving them to chefs, maybe in the chef community, if you have a token in the future, and that's the way that they vest for doing work. So um, just love to understand how you think that maybe the right player could help set the standard for this, either one of you just does somebody kind of have to be the education front and and take a little bit of the, the hits in terms of people being scared that NFT is all art or that there's speculation and they need to get past that and show, no, we can create utility. There's these ownership, the agency, all these pieces. So how do we go from digital art and some of the speculation to a true world of utility and who needs to spearhead that? I know it's loaded, right? Both of these. Go ahead, Spike. I'll take it after you. Yeah, I mean, Perrin, I think you're doing it right now by linking Adam and I together. Uh, it, it, you know, first of all, like it takes communities and things like this to kind of link some of these thought leaders, right? And I'll, I'll just speak on my personal experience. Um, you know, Tom and I took the hit for our industry, I feel like, you know, a, a little bit. I think there were some other players in the mix here. But by far, I think we were really the first chef-driven restaurateur community to kind of just like do do a pretty big project. Um, and, you know, we, you know, I often joke like we sold out in 24 hours, which speaks volume about our team and our mods and our, our devs and and everything. But it was a year of grinding on Twitter spaces, learning the space, losing followers, being called the Ponzi scheme, you know. Um, but all of that was a huge educational piece for me, for me that I love because I was able to package all those experience. And then when I'm onboarding chefs now into my platform you know, to possibly do NFT projects and be part of our next project, I'm able to speak on what's, you know, you know, some of the hiccups you're going to find along the way, right? You're going to have some of these doubters, but beyond the doubters, what I thought was interesting for chefs were often left out of technology conversations or the tech world or blockchain or NFTs. And for the first time ever, I saw like this immediate unity between this tech world, right? And the food and beverage world, like the chef world, restaurant world. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, we had Kimball Musk, which I don't know if I would have ever been able to reach him other than because we did this NFT project, right? He was part of our smart contract. When, when we minted Chef T pizzas, we made the big green Dow part of our, our smart contract. So immediately as we sold out, Money was directly going to the big green Dow, and they also earned on secondary. So, me just the unity to kind of the the tech world was was very interesting. Now, trying to take our platform and what I always refer to as a brand with the community behind it right now, uh, to to big business to real utility, um, I, I think I'm going to have to discover that, and we're going to have to build that. You know, right now utility. Uh, for the projects is low hanging fruit, right? And I say that very openly to our community. I say that very openly to Twitter space, but we're literally just scratching the surface and, and our best type of utility as chef is using our talents to cook. So I, you know, it, you know, for the, for, for our project, we said, listen, what, you know, people can understand the cooking class as as something they're getting a master class or what you, you know so being able to onboard people into our platform and to start get them to start talk a little bit about three 
our utility behind the Chef D Pizza Project, uh, for the most part, is cooking classes. We just had our our one last week. It was very successful, a lot of fun, you know. And you show value by doing that because these cooking classes are not cheap. We get hired out. Guys like Tom get hired out to twenty five to fifty thousand dollars for for cooking classes, right? And this community has access to this, right? And we're gonna ar archive all the cooking classes. So if you have a, you know, this 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 NFT, you're able to get in there and rewatch the class and, and 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 what have you, right? But just to point another thing on utility before I throw it to Adam, you know, we're finding, you know, it, it's interesting. So we onboarded about 25 celebrity chefs into the Chef D Pizza Discord. You know, we're talking guys like Ming Tsai, Andrew Zimmern, Kat Cora, which is an Iron Chef, Rocco Desperto, a legend, uh, you know, just to name a few. We have about 24. And developing that micro community, Adam, to me was mind boggling, right? Being able to have like the 25 chefs and all their fan club into one community to earn loyalties and earn utilities off of each other. I, I thought that I thought that was a pretty interesting proposition, right? To me, uh, you know, and once I started to introduce it to brands, for instance, uh, we did a deal and we're doing small little deals, right? Like with Maiden, right? Which is a, a pan company, right? Uh, knives and pans. And we basically, did, we're doing a taco contest, right? And it's this Thursday we judge and the winner gets a full set of made on pans, right? And then every member of our community gets like 25% off for like a week on the pans, right? And these aren't utility. I'd say these are perks of being part of the thing, right? I don't know how we describe it. There's a little pushback if that was utility or not. Like in our Discord, we have to listen to our community. But, but you know, we're figuring it out, but, but it is interesting. You know, I have, uh, you know, Le Creuset is in the DMs right now, right? And like all of a sudden, you know, people are starting to reach out with these brands because what they're starting to realize is like, should I, should I do this one deal with just Chef Spike and market to 50,000 on Instagram diluted fans with a ton of other advertisements? Or is it better just to kind of position myself into this community that I know they want, they want this, right? So anyways, uh, Adam, I know that was a lot, but, but, uh, no, I thought that was perfect. I mean, that's exactly right because you, uh, you know, the biggest takeaway, I think for anybody listening to this, whether you're a chef or you're a restaurant chain, or you're, even if you're not even in the restaurant business is that is what Spike is saying about community, community, community. Like it's the thing about NFTs, tokenized loyalty, web three, the thing that the biggest takeaway I'd say, and it kind of goes back to like your question parent about like, do we need somebody else to like do something here? Is that there? The these are like Lego blocks. Like you can sort of compose. Like think about the fact that like you as a brand, as a restaurant, as a chef, for example, you can say, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I can basically, I, I can create this collection of NFTs or like a di set of digital collectibles that I'm gonna sell, and then I've now got my community, and I've got an ability to sort of program content engagement to that community they're going to talk to one another they're going to give me feedback they're going to feel like owners and then the lego block part of it is like you can do collaborations with other communities pretty easily because like i'm talking about within the nft space because now that there's another community out there that has you know like like spike was saying its own group with its own owners and its own discord and if you are like-minded it's really easy to frankly say okay well everyone who owns one of those tokens i'm going to let get you know, into my discord for a day, I'm going to give them this benefit or whatever, like in a web two or basically a traditional today's technology world, like that would be hard. Like you'd be like, Oh my God, I got to like get my technology team to do this and that. Like, but in this world, it's much more composable. It's much more sort of a community based Lego blocks that you can sort of move around. And, and what I think is going to happen to your question about big companies. And one of the things Brightloom is working on is Brightloom really has it as its mission to say, we get all this. We think you could do what Spike did or what other brands, and we're helping other brands do this, which is like help them get into the space, like learn and think about like what they could do and how they could take kind of a crawl, walk, run approach. But we're also trying to move the space forward by making it more accessible, making it easier to use. Right. Maybe even making it more, um, you know, uh, environmentally sustainable. So there's a lot of things about this space that are early and clunky and scary. And but on the other side of it is this wonderful thing that we're talking about around community and entrepreneurialism, and engagement and co-creation. So how do we like get rid of the clunky part and the scary part? And so we're trying to work with some of the biggest brands in the world right now to like help them 
think this through. So stay tuned for more on that. But I, I think that will help, but I don't think it's going to happen overnight. And I think it's going to take people, frankly, like Spike, who are willing, and I, I really mean this, Spike, I, I, I want to connect with you offline because like, I know what you're saying, like you, to be an early adopter in this space is like no joke. It takes some courage and it takes some willingness to fail and learn and co-create and listen and like more, and that's true of any startup, but that's just really true in the Web3 space. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I was really excited. I think both of you are touching on something that I'm, I'm kind of calling like permissionless partnership. So it's this idea that you can come together. It's a lot easier and it's meant to really just bring these parties together in a way where we've talked to a lot of communities. There are an NFT community and then there's a coffee community. How do you kind of bring them and introduce the NFT to coffee? And you're kind of doing that and you're introducing the coffee community to NFT. And I've seen that across the board. And I think it's been really successful. Obviously, bringing the chefs together gives us the same thing. I think this comes back to kind of the last questions, which we're, we're running out of time, but yeah. both where is the technology at today? Cause you both are in the middle of it in terms of actually for people who want to execute, how easy is it to have this strategy? And then in a sense, there's two ways to look at it. how much friction is there for the customer right now because of that current state. And does that preclude widespread adoption for the next bit until we get through it? Kind of leading off our other question, which is does someone have to make it easier, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw that to, to, to Adam to handle first there. Okay, thanks, Mike. Like, yeah, I, just to talk truth here, it is not easy. Um, so for the average person, they don't even know what we're talking about, number one. Number two, even if they kind of know what we're talking about, you know, they sort of follow it. For the, If they have never purchased an NFT or been involved in crypto in any way, like it's just like talking like you're from Mars, okay? So it's not easy it's kind of clunky and scary. It doesn't always even work. Um, and there's only about a million people, I think on the planet, maybe it's in the US, but I think it's on the planet that have ever bought or sold an NFT. So what that means is that for the average, the average, you know, operator, marketer or brand or chef or whatever, like keep in mind, like, you know, mo the vast majority of your fan base, your, your brand fans, they don't, they wouldn't, you would have to onboard them. You'd have to be patient with them. You'd have to explain it. So it's clunky. It's difficult. And the answer, but it's not impossible to onboard folks, right? Like you look at like, I'm sure Spike can talk about that. You know, it's, if people are willing to do it, it's kind of fun once you try it. And then secondly, like, I, I think it's going to take a year or two to get mainstream. So this isn't going to be mainstream tomorrow. And you got to be understanding that everything we're saying right now isn't going to change in like three months. It's like, you know, it's a slow evolution, but it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'll, I'll just talk a little bit on the other side of that. I mean, it's, it's scary. It, it, what's, what we're fortunate about our project is that the conversation in NFT form on Discord is about food, right? We do have some conversations about rarity. We do have conversations about rank because we're a PFP project, but really ultimately they're learning NFTs and Web3 three through the love of food. And that's very advantageous for us because we could like level set that conversation to be interesting, appetizing. People often leave hungry after they're in our Discord, right? So, uh, and then the onboarding, you know, for, you know, so, uh, just, you know, I'll tell you quickly, you know, Chef T Pizzas was the PFP and we'll look at it as the iconic project. Tom and I are driving utility behind that. Um, but we're developing something much larger, which is what we we believe is the Chef T marketplace, right? Where this food and beverage NFT world should should live. So we're going to be releasing the Chef T uh, Pass, which is a, our Genesis project uh in about a month or two and it won't be like a, a fun little pizza it'll be like a, one singular logo rotating knife or something like that but it will really signify like this membership to this club we plan on launching that with like 12 15 other chefs right uh and why that's interesting for us is that we're going to take one step further with another group of chefs and really now like grow the community with another 12 chefs communities right and we're gonna be able to have some really interesting learning because we're really targeting chefs across the United States to be able to spread the love, to be able to drive the utility. And, and what we hope that we're building is kind of like the roadblocks for the food and beverage world, where not only chefs will be able to come in and launch their NFT program, or what have you, it'll be makers, like a beer maker, a wine maker, because we'll develop this great demand and super fans of NFTs and Web3 and be able to kind of have like this living, breathing community. Um, and you know, the other, I just wanna say, Adam said something really interesting that collectibles, right? If you look at this as collectibles, like stamps or hockey cards or what have you, I, I, lo I love that analogy because, you know, 
people's I mean, some people drive to get the blue check mark, right? And, and at the end of the day on Twitter, that's just like a, like, because that's a label, right? People, when they go to like, when people, consumers go out to restaurants and, uh, or they give to a charity, they often want to walk away with like a signed menu or s some type of memory of that occasion, right? And what I love about this platform is that in essence, like you'll be building your culinary passport. If you're a foodie and in NFTs, you'll be able to have all these NFTs that represent experiences that you've had in the culinary world. Maybe it's a charitable NFT that you donated to or what have you. Maybe it's this restaurant you went to like 11 Madison Park and had this one menu that was just for that one NFT. But, you know, in essence, you're building these collectibles and these assets at the same time. And I find that vastly interesting. So anyways, that's, uh, that's what I got on that. No, I mean, it's, this is super interesting. I think we're running out of time. I'd love to give you guys just both one chance to give a context of, do you think it's worth the time and investment for the average chef or restaurateur right now to get into Web3 or not? And there's there's no reason that no can't be an answer as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll answer that. Um, you know, I, I say yes. I mean, my, my, uh, my part-time job now is to believe in this as a new vertical for chefs that has been apt, uh, untapped for them a way not only to drive more IP back to themselves, more to the brands that they work on, but really harness the community that they market uh, and leverage that through, through utility and through loyalty and, and, and really just build around them. You know, you know, my big hopes is that Shefty becomes such a strong food and beverage community that companies like Starbucks will give loyalty to our specific community, right. To come in or something, you know, things that like reverse the model a little bit, you know? Um, so, so yeah, there, there you go. I couldn't agree more. I, my quick answer is yes, I think it's worth it. But just, you know, if, if you're a chef or a restaurant owner or chain and you just heard Spike talk about what he's doing and what and what he's going to do next, if you're not inspired by that, then like I, I can't imagine you and no everyone would be inspired by that because like yeah. it's this is a place to be creative. And I think chefs are inherently creative. Right. So and like restaurant marketers are inherently creative. Like this is an inherently playful, creative space. But instead of it just being about like one technical thing, it's about your brand and your your community and like minded other people. And like it's fun. So it's I would encourage people to at least read up on it. It'd be like being in 1996 if you were a restaurant and someone said you really ought to like look into this web thing like you know, you back, if you could go back in time, if someone said, do you think I should, you'd be like, yes, I think you should. <laughs> it's going to be a thing, you know? <laughs> uh, well, this was great. I think we could have gone for at least 30 minutes more. We barely got into it. We didn't talk about altcoins for payment for restaurants and a million other topics that would be great. So hopefully we'll continue this conversation soon, but everyone make sure you're checking out what they're doing at Brightloom and check out Adam and the Shefty system and, or ecosystem and, and Spike. And uh, follow us as well, LA Eats on Twitter, and we're always covering the Web3 space. So thanks, everyone, for their time and both of you for joining us. This was a wonderful conversation. Thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks guys. Thank you.